So in celebration of hitting a million subscribers here on YouTube, thanks to you guys, we're gonna be doing a little tour of the armory. If you guys hadn't noticed for the past year or so, we've had a lot less shooting content, a lot less cool videos, less one takes, and that's just because there's a lot of company expansion going on, and a lot of my job has gone from sort of marketing and, and sort of video guy to being more of the CEO here at the company. So a lot of meetings, a lot of decision making, and stuff like that. However, at times, at times I still get to go into the armory and do some things. So I'm gonna show you guys my office, which is the armory, because I don't have one here. It's either the conference room or the armory. So that's the production floor out there, nylons here, shipping and fulfillments in the other building. And this is the media room. This is where the magic happens. So Drew and Charles are over there doing their thing. And now we are in the armory. What we're gonna be doing is I'm just gonna give you guys a little tour and explain kind of why we do what we do and why we have this and how we've set it up the way that we do. So the number one goal of T-Rex Arms, as we've said for a very long time and we continue to say every year, is educating people. Uh, giving free education, inspiring people to get out there and train, understand what the Second Amendment is about, and some of that requires that we go and learn stuff and learn about gear and equipment so that we can offer education to people uh, the most effectively as we can. So as the company has grown, as our customer service team has grown, as the questions and the variety of questions has grown that we just get as a company, uh, so we also have to grow the equipment, the gear, the stuff, the knowledge, the perspective. And in order to fit all of the gear that we are buying and assembling and acquiring, we have to have an armory. So the purpose of this room in particular is to house all of that equipment, but also create sets where we can film our various uh, YouTube lives, Instagram lives, and just content which you guys have seen, and now this video, uh, but also store the gear so that we have access to it, we know where to go to get it. When customer service runs over here because they've got a question from one of you saying, hey, does such and such an optic work on such and such a gun? They can come by and be like, uh, well, yes, uh, attacker, one to eight, combined with you know an offset mount from you know this company you know, or whatever, and then they can set that up on a gun and build it out. And often when I'll come in here from like a meeting or something, I'll find a couple of the customer service guys in here playing with the configuration, taking photos on their phone to send to one of you guys, to a customer. So with that said, let's just do a little, we'll start over here in this little area. Um, so this large shelving unit houses a bunch of parts. We have a bin here full of uh, 416 rails and just other items, including some uh, LMT stuff it looks like. So we have one of those uh, 416 stocks in here, which is actually kind of lame, but you know, wanted to play with one and see you know what I thought about it. Uh, MCX parts, so these are all uh, rails, various Virtus Gen 1 rails. Um, I like to try to get one of kind of everything from companies so we have a good idea of you know what they're making and tolerancing. Some of the MCX rails from Midwest Industries, for example, are a little wobbly, uh, not as good as I would like. We have some Daewoo parts in here, MCX stocks in here, which are very hard to find. Not gonna talk about that. Not gonna talk about some of those other things, ACR parts, helmets, full built Chad helmet. Some of you guys will know what I'm talking about. And then we also have some pistols. So primarily we shoot Glocks. You guys have seen a lot of Glocks in our videos. I'm a big Glock guy. I mean, I really don't care what pistol I have. I am carrying a Glock though, um, but when we run around with other kinds of pistols, M and P, CZ, M9, 320, uh, we just have these little pelicans here to kind of house all the holsters for them and magazines. Uh, so if I grab, for example, the CZ box off of the shelf, let's see what we got in here. So, okay, well, I guess I'm a FUD. Um, leather holster, these are actually kind of fun because they fit you know, a variety of weapon lights and whatnot. Um, so right here, I have a CZ 75 BD. I have a few CZs in here, I think two or three. No, okay, magazines, uh, holsters, Ragnarok. This is an SP-01 that's uh, been Cajunized. Actually super slick, and this has an old X300 on it. That's actually, that's actually pretty cool. Cool little setup. So, CZ, I'm just gonna leave that there. A gun that I never shoot, 2011. This is an STI Open that the infamous Al Zeta worked on for me. And I'm just not able to shoot guns like this very often. 
and uh, it is very fast, basically a little submachine gun. It chambered a nine millimeter with a custom Ragnarok that I made forever ago. Um, I just don't really have time to shoot this. So this sits here with all of its appropriate magazines, Mars carriers, ready to go. If we decide we need to take it out to the range, we can just grab that whole Pelican, off we go. Uh, Glock 22s, because I do shoot 40 here and there. 226s, MP5 stuff. Um, actually got, is this the, no. Oh, it's in here. I have a really, this is kind of cool actually. So I bought this a while ago. I paid way too much for it. Um, but the Beretta 96 Combat, which uh, this is not a compensator. It's basically just a weight and for form and function. Um, but this is chambered in 40 because I do have about 9,000 rounds of 40 I need to shoot through. But uh, just some weird stuff like this, you know, just for perspective, an older kind of a gun. Uh, don't have a holster for it. And uh, I can't get the guys to make me a holster for it. Um, so... I could tell them to, but I don't like doing that. So I'll just not have that. M9s, gas masks, M&Ps, we actually have all those out. So we just have a bunch of extra stuff here. Orion belts uh, and others. This is a Ronin belt right here, just hanging up, ready to go. Uh, this is another Ronin belt with our new uh, gray Kydex color for, the, um, for our Ragnaroks and our Mars carriers. We're doing some photos of that. So, you know, when we need a certain colorway or a certain belt, we can, you know, grab that, build it out, modify it, and that's great. But let's get to the stuff that you're really interested in. Oh, we haven't gone over that wall yet. We'll get there. Our Galotech gun cages. Uh, so Galotech has some pretty awesome uh, products out there. I'm sure some of y'all have seen them, whether it's from other influencers or whatever, but they actually make some really awesome uh, weapons cages that you can kind of modify. And they also just look nice. They've got electronic locks and uh, they also just have a manual lock as well. So the way we have these sorted right now, sort of uh, built out, is uh, this one has our budget guns, or budget builds. So we have our ballistic advantage guns, our, I actually have Colts in here, which I guess aren't budget anymore now that C CZ bought them, and I'm sure original Colts are gonna be super expensive. Uh, but they're in here because they don't have optics, they're kind of more traditional. Uh, so we have our ballistic advantage guns, they sent us some guns a while back. I asked for a quote, and then we just ended up getting some uppers, which, hey, it's cool, I wanted to buy them, they sent them, whatever. Uh, but I have like three or four of those, uh, 16 inch guns, Wolf Alpha, Polymer, you know, basic shorty FSP gun with Aimpoint Pros because we were uh, marketing Aimpoint Pros a while ago when we launched them. So we got some like budgety guns to build them out. Aero Precision, uh, this is some sort of custom thing with a, actually, what does this have? This has a Knight's Rail, Knight's, some other, I don't know. I, I want to play with that. And Pec 2s used to be budget. They're not really budget anymore because of cloners and all that. Um, this is a, Arrow lower with a ballistic advantage upper with a BCM bolt uh, with a old Surefire light hand guard. These are actually kind of cool. Uh, very low lumens as you can see though, but kind of cool. Drop in gives you a light, kind of chubby and fat and thick, but uh, actually kind of cool. And you can pick them up for, at least as of this video, right this second, you can pick them up for cheap. But now that I've shown them, <laughs> maybe not anymore. Uh, another ballistic advantage gun, this has a, uh, Made in the Philippines, um, actually, well, no, it's the Viper. I thought it was the primary arms optic. Uh, Viper PST, which is like a $700 optic. Uh, and then, you know, this is the ultimate shad killer right there. Um, if you want to be an ultimate rat. So kind of our budget, we have some Glock stuff, pistol stuff in here as well. Um, some, you know, the OG mod light, pistol light right here on this 226. And, um, yeah, you know, don't ask about a holster for that. If you build one out similarly, don't, uh, don't, don't bother. So that's sort of our budget cage. Over on this one, this is our sort of uh, quad rail Picatinny Mark 18 kind of a setup. We also have a lot of our sub guns in here. So like the TP9, which is honestly one of the worst investments, return on investment guns. Uh, this whole build's like four grand with a rubbish trigger. It's like a Nerf gun. Um, and it's just not as cool as it should be for that amount of money and the cans never being in stock and the guns being hard to find, uh, but it is kind of cool. Uh, SP89 or 98, 89, uh, MP5K, it's a old, an old one, kind of fun. And then, I know we haven't done any videos with this, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go over this because it's pretty cool. So this is a Sight Spectre for those of you that have played either GoldenEye back in the day or Black Ops 1, which is where I learned about Spectres because I don't remember them from GoldenEye. But um, this is a very interesting little sub gun that utilizes uh, quad stack magazines, coffin magazines. Uh, these are very uh, hard to find, but the actual even harder thing to find are the original stocks. They only imported 130 of these stocks into the country for I think it was around 3,000 of these as pistols. 
um, back in the, uh, I want to say it was the 90s or the 80s. Um, the stock cost me um, $2,600 uh, just for the stock. Uh, and the gun was actually a bit cheaper than that. So um, this is a pretty rare setup just because it is an original stock um, that is built out for this gun and um, it is pretty cool. So we'll do, we'll do a video on this, although the sights are absolutely dreadful. And we do have the long boy magazines as well. These are also pretty expensive, like three to $400. So this is actually like a piece of history. And since I'm a bit of a gamer and a, kind of a little bit of a nerd as well, um, I, I do like having this and I'm sure we will we'll do some things with it. It's not select fire. I'm probably gonna not worry about that, but uh, it is a pretty cool, pretty cool setup. So yeah, anyway, so Spectre, uh, sub guns. So our sub guns are in here. Uh, we also have, oh shoot, just get, get in there somewhere. Uh, full auto Glock, but we never shoot that pretty much ever. Maxim, we pretty much never shoot that ever. Uh, one of these flux things, which we also pretty much never shoot ever. Uh, some suppressors. Uh, Griffin, uh, suppressors is something we want to look more into. We want to go buy more suppressors from other companies. And we talked about it back in Isaac's suppressor video forever ago. But actually collecting one of every suppressor from the major manufacturers, dropping those onto a certain gun for testing, which I originally bought uh, or had built six Mark 18s, all identical for that project. Um, we just haven't had time to get to it. And actually a bunch of them are in here. Um, these are all Mark 18s that are identical. Oh, well, that has a Geisley rail. So these, these five uh, are identical. Uh, I think there might be one more somewhere, um, but we also have 14, uh, 14, five, uh, two 14 fives in here, three actually, this is a BCM rail. Um, and then these were all built out in lots of different ways. This one's got a vortex optic painted up all gray. And what, the other thing that we do is obviously we like, we like painting our guns. We do that quite a bit and I did a video on this as well. Um, but the other reason we kind of do it is based on the equipment that we're showcasing the gear or kind of the, the vibe, the marketing kind of vibe we're going with, uh, we'll grab guns based on, you know, what that thing is. So if we're using multi-cam kit, you know, we may grab just a standard, you know, brown wrist two kind of a gun like that, unpainted. Um, but if we're doing like, you know, ready rigs that are gray and bags and low-vis urban, you know, we'll go with gray because it makes more sense in that kind of environment. Uh, and then we just have our traditional green color that we do on basically everything like this Mark 18 right here uh, with the Surefire RC2s. We have a lot of Surefires. Surefire suppressors are great. Um, they're kind of, in my opinion, the Glock of the suppressor world. They're not the quietest, they're not the lightest, they're not the cheapest, um, but they are, and they're not the most expensive either. Um, but on all the spectrum of you know signature reduction and everything, I do think they're one of the best out there. And I really have enjoyed using mine for years now and they're still, they're still running. Uh, Modern Warfare 2 M4 arms rail, uh, the actual proper rail for this. Uh, we don't really shoot these a whole lot, but we have like some, even has the PRI uh, front sight post gas block setup. Um, we don't really shoot these a whole lot. Just kind of depends on the project, the product, what we're wanting to focus on, what point we want to drive home, kind of what gun we pick for that. So if we're like, you know, if it's a video on, you know, training beats gear, well, I'll take a standard M4. Uh, not something with an M-Lock rail that's super Gucci and cool. I'll just grab one of these, go to the range, do my video, talk about it. It's a gun, shoots a bullet, has an optic or sights, and go to town. So that's part of the reason why we have uh, more basic guns, and they're not all just Gucci crazy guns. Uh, and here we've got some 7.62 guns. So um, M91, a Zastava M91 uh, and 5.4, so essentially a Dragonov. Only I know some of you nerds will be like, that's not a real Dragonov. Um, you know, because it's not a $12,000 Tiger, uh, but you know what? That's fine. It's the same manual of arms, same magazine, same optic, same rubbish that Dragonovs are. Uh, almost as rubbish as this gun, uh, the EBR. This is a 16 inch. It's not the full size. Kind of fun, a little different. I picked it up a long time ago for cheap monies. Uh, G3, 12 inch G3 from PTR. So it's not like an actual G3, but you know, same manual of arms once again, and you know, same magazines. Uh, 13 13.7 SCAR, a FAL, DSA FAL, 16-inch Voyager or, or Discoverer or Christopher Columbus. I don't know what they're called. Um, two FNCs. These are actually a little more, a little more rare. And yes, I did paint them, so the all you collectors can, uh, can you know, scream internally. Um, this one's set up with an old aim point. Aim point. I think it's a, uh, the 3000. Uh, we were doing a bunch of that sort of content with these FNCs and just shooting in general back when uh, Call of Duty Cold War came out and unfortunately that game kind of sucked and so we 
devoted our attention to some other other projects, other stuff. Um, AKs, we have a lot of different AK parts. So this is my Meridian uh, crank, which has obviously different furniture than some of you guys may have seen. I also have all the like modern Zendico stuff, um, but a little a little different. Got the dead air can. This gun actually shoots uh, really great. I'm not a huge AK guy, but um, I do have a couple nice AKs uh, that do function quite well in, in 545, not 762 by 39, because 545 you know is the best. Um, but uh, then this is my uh, 12 inch Alpha, which is also obviously a very nice. AK build, um, which again, I don't shoot AKs a whole lot. I like knowing how to use them, um, but they're AKs. You know, like there's a reason 90% of our guns are M4s. So in this cage, we've got, let's see what we have. Uh, some of the more, I guess, modern guns in here, grenade launchers, uh, full auto, two 300 blackouts over here. Uh, my prototype, uh, well, actually I have prototype T-Rex arms guns in here, which I talked about on Instagram already, but. Nothing's happening because, you know, supply and all that. But uh, Geisley Rail, it's a 10-3, pretty simple. Um, shot that gun quite a lot. Uh, my OG BCM, it does not have an optic on it because that optic got pulled to go to something else. I actually have more guns than I have optics, which starts to be a problem when we're trying to build guns out for a certain shoot or a certain project, and then we have to go steal optics off of everything else. We have to zero guns constantly, and sometimes they'll only be zeroed for like two weeks, and then we pull that optic, put on something else, and have to re-zero. Um, you'd think we would just go and get more optics, but no, we're not smart. <laughs> That's not what we do. We just keep zeroing. Uh, another prototype T-Rex gun. This is a 13.9 with a Geisley rail. Um, again, the optics gone because it's on uh, one of the MCXs. We'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, ACR. Piece of crap. It's still busted. Piston uh, has some issues. Um, one of my favorite guns. Again, we're going to try to do videos with a lot of these. Don't worry, guys. Especially this one. A uh, little Car 15. Super basic. Old school, totally awesome, and also the most Gucci of high of bore offsets. You can go out and buy a Unity mount, and go out and buy a, you know, a skyscraper or whatever. Uh, but this is the real. This is the real OG. This is the Gucci. If you want to, the taller you get, the more Gucci it is. That's what they don't tell you, but uh, this right here, that's what it is. Old Surefire light. This thing weighs absolutely nothing, and uh, now it's also select fire. Um, so, great little gun. We'll do a video on that with some like old kit, I think. Um, this is an Modern Warfare, one of our Modern Warfare 2 guns. Uh, well, ish, it has the arms uh, riser with a full size 203, which is unloaded, safety's on. I've got sights on it, mod light on a light bar, pushing it forward. Uh, activate that on this side, pretty dandy. So again, optimizing the use of a grenade launcher on an M4, because why not? Um, and it is a real LMT 203, we don't do 37s. Um, my SPR, again, another prototype 13.9 with a Night Force 2 to 10, offset D Pro. Um, and this gun, uh, I usually have 77 OTMs in there. And uh, I can also make it a little smaller for bags and stuff, which is pretty cool. Law folders are awesome. They're super hard to get these days. Uh, three Galils, I haven't really gotten into those yet. Uh, EOTech and aim points on them. Um, 545 and 556, kind of a mix. Um, then another another launcher, Glock frames, but that's all that's all boring stuff. So lots of different guns to work with. Old Daewoo right here we've been playing with. But the real big one, sort of culturally and has sort of really grown over the past really couple of years. Because I've been shooting this these guns for oh stop. Shooting these guns now for like four years. And back when I started, they really weren't a thing. People didn't really talk about them. People didn't really know about them. But the new gun of 2021 is the MCX. And uh, my original MCX is this guy right here. Um, it's actually uh it's what the uh Infinity War devs actually found when they contacted me to work on um the call not not the latest Call of Duty, but you know Modern Warfare, the real Call of Duty. Um, so this was the gun I was using at the time. Uh, I went through a lot of different changes, Midwest rails, the OG rail, different optics and setups and whatnot. Uh, but then I then later on upgraded to the uh, 300 Blackout Virtus and this guy, which was a 5.56 Virtus. And I started shooting those a lot more. Didn't shoot my OG uh, as much. And then recently we went out and we purchased 10 uh, police trade-in MCXs from a department in Pennsylvania. It was actually through a reseller. Uh, they all came with the now discontinued SIG suppressors, which actually work pretty well. They're super quiet and lightweight. Uh, keeping them tight to the gun, though, seems to be a little bit of an issue. So we'll figure, we'll figure something out. 
Uh, but we built all these out for a project we're working on. So they've all got TAN PECs or LA5s. They pretty much all have EOTEX and they've all got similar stocks and this is kind of the build. And um, the MCX is one of my favorite, if not my favorite, out of the box factory gun. Um, they're super easy to modify, adjust, build. You can shoot them stock folded or collapsed, unlike standard M4s. Um, they also just have some of the cool factor associated with them of what kind of units are using them now, Call of Duty, uh, I'm sure movies are gonna have these more uh, shortly. Um, so this is basically, at least in my opinion, based on right now, this is basically the new 416, which I know that's gonna make 416 people, uh, what's, the, what's a good word for that, sort of rise, um, rizzle, or whatever the word is. Um, but uh, I think the MCX is gonna be like the new gun. And uh, unfortunately, they're very expensive on GunBroker right now, barrels and stuff like that, just because People want them. People are seeing folks run around with them, and you know, pe people want to try something new. And uh, like this little, this is one I've been using right now. It shot the barrel out, but this is a 675 Gen 1 300 blackout barrel with a surefire suppressor underneath. And this little guy is, uh, well, it's uh, some, something else. Wilcox Riser, uh, short EOTech. It's actually a single dot EOTech I've had for like five years. And then it's got the uh, Wilcox mount right here where you can pop the magnifier out, do a little pirate captain sort of uh, scoping around. And then when you're ready, you can shove it back on there and you're set. And then I have an old Gen 1 SD rail, goes right over the suppressor and it's good to go. So enough talk about the MCXs. Let's go over to here. So this is one of the uh, kind of where we store all of our little parts when we're building guns out, which we're doing pretty much every week doing something, toying with lasers, lights, different configurations, where switches go, where switches shouldn't go, stuff like that. Uh, oh, hey, look, a little shotgun. Um, we have basically all of our, uh, Josh has done a great job at organizing like all the parts. So I have this bin right here for pressure switches of all kinds, uh, Surefire, lasers, you know, Insight, PEC, mod light, uh, cloud thingies, whatever it happens to be so that I can like set up my lasers and my lights properly. So I have all that, some maps and just get down there. XVL2 stuff, so super cool little setup. Uh, some miscellaneous lights in here. This is actually, uh, this is a little throwback. This was the first light I ever had on a rifle. This is some sort of little Chinese, I don't know. At least it's not a bomb, or like some lights, on a VTAC mount. So that was my first weapon light ever. So pretty fun. Uh, now, you know, things are a little different, uh, but lots of different setups. So like this is a TLR, this is a good example. Like we don't sell this, but we wanted to play with it. So we got the TLR one rifle light combo, which comes with a switch, which out of the box actually comes with an insight um, switch as well for the dual pad. So that's actually really cool as far as like a budget setup. And then you can run that into a, um, like a D ball I2 or something, you know, budget E ish, uh, or like even a PEC two. And then you can activate your white light and you can actually activate the laser out of the box, which is actually pretty cool for a, you know, a commercial light. Uh, cloud defensive, we don't sell this, we're playing with it. Cloud defensive light, it is quite large and uh, proprietary switching, which I'm not a big fan of, but whatever. Um, old Surefire lights, new Surefire lights. Uh, the mod lights, we usually have a few here. Old pistol lights, old Surefire. TLR2 green laser, I was running this on a, European clone build, so, because they love lasers over there. Old Surefire laser, haven't had time to use this. Look at that sucker, uh, with all the zeroing stuff right here. It's pretty pretty gnarly, pretty wild. Um, pressure, different like mod light heads, IR switches, more mod light heads, Surefire new in box, pills. We just come in here, this is, the, this is just where we get all of our, you know, when the stress gets to us, we just come in here and pick down Excedrin. So that's great. Uh, moving down, more light. We have a lot of light accessories. So th these are all the different like mounts, light bars, uh, 30 millimeter BCM thing, cloud defensive switch holder, which that should probably go in there. Actually, uh, just lots of different options. We can get in here, Unity thingy that puts the light off to the side uh, with like your laser. Box of slings, so slings and hardware, QD, uh, QD points, actual QDs the little sling, you know, whatever is to hold the sling down to your rifle. So we can come over here, grab a sling, put on a rifle, we're set, get you out of the way. Offset mounts, 
This bin, I want to say has, I want to say this is all, yeah, this is all Glock parts. So like magwells, actually those are rifle parts, just miscellaneous. And I, sometimes I forget like what all we have. So I'll go through here and kind of look around and be like, oh shoot, like a nub mod for a safari land. So then I set it out because I, and actually I will put that on something. Um, old triggers, this is a, hmm, I remember this. Back in the day, this is a skimmer trigger. Um, supposedly a 1911 trigger, and it's not. Uh, it just has no take up, but Glock triggers, unfortunately, will never be 1911 triggers. I'm not a big 1911 guy, but, oh look, another one. But, um, Glock triggers will never rival the awesomeness of, what already happened there? Of a 1911 trigger, so just, you know. Just how it is. Uh, ALG Gen 4 Magwell. So, box full of whatevers. Um, oh, we have Glock slides. A bunch of Glock slides here. Stock Gen... These are all Gen 4, too. This is an, an old... Uh, I don't know what that is. It's, it's got the, the weird front. It's like a 19X. Adam cut, though. Which I've never even used. Um, T-Rex slide with the D-Pro. Another D-Pro slide. So, if we need to swap around optics or whatever, we can just throw a slide on. Uh, mini optics, RMR, Inside MRDS, D Pro, whatever it is we're playing with, Scalar Works, um, more mounts, and something we started getting into and playing with is uh, Russian lights and lasers. So I've been ordering a lot of stuff from Russia. Um, I like playing with stuff from other countries. Again, added perspective. Uh, we get messages about these, like, is it a good budget laser? And I'm like, well, I wonder if the lights are any good. Um, and so then figuring out how all the accessories work, the pressure pads, do they hold zero? How do you warranty them if they're international? So we're also collecting foreign stuff as well. Uh, optics, again, our big thing is we like to pick high quality optics to sell, but in order to pick them effectively, we gotta have wide perspective of what everyone is offering. So I've got a Voodoo here, I have a Razor here. These are th uh, products that we support and that we offer. But in order to come to that conclusion, I like to know what Kahala's is doing, or Kale's, what Primary Arms is doing, although I traded that to someone, what Schmidt & Bender is doing, although I would never sell this, it's like four grand. Um, plus for what it is, I don't think it's worth it. Um, this is a, this is okay, this is the primary arms I was looking for, their Philippines uh, setup. Uh, so that one right there, so some of the, two of the more budgety options. Uh, US Optics, they're one to six. The Attacker, one to eight. Leupold, one, 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 one to eight. The CQB SS, which I originally got for my SCAR, um, they're also like two grand. Uh, ACOGs, uh, aimpoint magnifiers on the flip to center thing, so that we can have a little more perspective as to what's going on and I use all this, we play with it. I only used the Schmidt for like two days though. It was really all I needed um, to be like, yeah, that's pretty lame for on one X and everything else. Um, even old stuff, you know, old Colt four power. Uh, it goes right to the carry handle. Super fun, really yellow. Uh, not the best optic to shoot with, but again, perspective. It's also really cool to see how far we've come from, you know, this to that. Talk about it, education. It's really a big deal to us. Um, again, perspective. Russian Elkan, the entire reticle inside is tilted because the uh, quality control was really bad. It's also only like $300, but uh, yeah, really interesting. Russian optics have a very interesting uh, level of quality control. Aimpoint 3000, super old. Another Russian optic, this one's actually pretty cool. It's a Pilid 2.5, just a fixed, fixed uh, prism optic. It's actually kind of rad. Uh, I haven't really had time to put it on a gun, like shoot it. Giant Russian aimpoint ripoff thing. Looks like a big machine gunner sight, but uh, this thing is also weighs absolutely nothing. Some sort of weird alloy. Uh, different optics, LCO now discontinued, but hey, we got those. Uh, EOTEX, aimpoints, um, Pillid. Some of y'all recognize this sucker. Sucks. Don't buy them. Uh, Wilcox Boss, really cool uh, site that has integrated lasers. This was originally developed for the uh, sort of Rattler kind of a gun, tiny little PDW. Gives you IR, viz, and a red dot all slaved together. And a throw lever that you can, you zero for like supersonic. You throw the throw lever over, two subs, and your entire zero changes. It's just like elevation. Um, so you can actually uh, basically have an accurate aiming reference, aiming point, um, an accurate zero based on what kind of ammo you're shooting. Really cool. They're hard to get. They're pretty expensive. The dot sucks though. You have to live in England to use it where it's overcast like all the time. Uh, Wilcox riser, just for depending on what build we're focusing on. Old Vortex, old EOTech, which is getting pretty dim, unfortunately. Um, you don't see these every day. This is a uh, Swedish aim point. 
Uh, these actually have a, the batteries enclosed, so you can't change the battery, but it's super rugged for cold weather, uh, Arctic conditions. You can't get these in the US, definitely not with the three crowns on it, but um, they're pretty cool. I actually really like it. And it has Picatinny on the top, not exactly sure why. I mean, I guess I could mount a, you know, a little grenade launcher side up there, zero it to my 203. Um, and then it has backup irons on top as well. If for whatever reason in the cold, you lose the ability to see your optic, you do have the irons on the top. So pretty cool optic that I haven't had time to use. Cobra, throw that on AK. Old M.6 by, which sucks, had that for years. And weird stuff like this, which some of you all have seen. Um, this amazingly bright, high lumen, old SAS style Operation Nimrod um, set up right here for an MP5. And then uh, of course, stuff like this, super OG, uh, OEG site, occluded eye, eye gun site, occluded eye box gun site, eye gun site, um, where you can't actually see through it. The fiber is in the front, so you have to have both eyes open uh, on this like old M4 setup. And then down here, we've got parts. We've got nylon, we've got plate carriers, we've got, this is a box full of Coyote Brown stuff. This is a box of holsters, box of holsters, including Safari Lands and ours, because we use products from other companies. You know, we don't just use products from uh, T-Rex, some companies make certain things we don't or they make it better. Like Safari Land ALS is the best level two uh, retention holster on the market. We love to talk about those. Box of stocks and uh, braces and other stuff. There's a bunch of uppers here that we haven't had time to put on guns. We have like a bunch of alpha um, uppers for like budget guns, they're like $500, uh, which is actually pretty good for what it is and what you get. Uh, it's just some other stuff safe lasers so depending on what we're working on so there's a purse laser here's a peck 2 here's an old peck um i can't remember the model number for this one uh it's a pistol although you can run them on sub guns too uh pistol laser uh mall d ball wilcox thing which i picked up super cheap a while ago but it's kind of useless um, some other pecks in here for stuff so depending on kind of what we're trying to do mcx locker Few guns here, the saw, uh, big boy scar, which I've started using a lot more lately. 416 with a collapsing stock because I wanted to test one of these. I built this gun out. We've, I've got different rails for it. I've got different stocks for it. Wanted to see how it was with a collapsing stock in a bag. Kind of sucks. It's not as good as other PDW stocks or even a folding stock out there. It's just, there's a lot of stuff going on when you're trying to retract it versus an MCX where you just grab the stock, flip it out, you're on the gun, you're done. Um, MP5. You know, kind of the same thing. We have different stocks for them, different hand guards, so we can kind of play with it. And um, yeah, just kind of learn, which is great. Uh, ammo, lots of backpacks. We're doing a lot of sort of kind of focusing on like low vis content or just hiding guns. Um, so collecting a lot of different bags out there, seeing what works. You know, Mystery Ranch, which that's not a low vis bag. I got that for a different project. This weird triangular 511 bag. The Eberly stock sent us a bunch of these cherry bomb bags, which are super cool. I think I bought one and then they saw we were using it and they sent more, which, hey, I'm down, that's fine. You know, I would have paid for them, but I think I paid for the first one and that's kind of sometimes how it goes. Uh, we, oh, this is lame. Well, I'll sh I'm sure some of you guys are wondering, hey, where are y'all shotguns? Well, th we keep them in here. I do have some shotguns. I shoot three gun once a year, <laughs> basically. Uh, this is a Versa Max. This is my first shotgun. It's very early 2016 or whatever, 15. Um, I also have a Benelli M4, which I never shoot. Um, arguably one of the better shotguns on the market. But then my actual like modern shotgun, my new shotgun, which I did run in the last uh, Memorial 3-gun match, and I was pretty happy with the performance of it, um, is this uh, Hayes Custom uh, Benelli. And um, so I quad load from here and have a match saver. And, uh, but I'm not a big shotgun guy. I shoot them once a year and that's really about it. Plus we have the little breaching shotgun. So we've got cages over here, Barrett's up top with the suppressor, of course, the missile on the front, um, different chest rigs, got some Vietnam kind of old stuff, ghillie suit, bunch of chest rigs, extra plate carriers in here. This is an old Haley rig. This is a built out Eagle rig with a bunch of stuff on it. Some other stuff, LBT. We're working on some products right now that utilize other chest rigs. So we go out and buy chest rigs from, well, really everyone, uh, just so we can integrate the products in with what they've got, because I hate proprietary. I 
I don't like proprietary parts where you're forced to like buy into that brand. I prefer products that can work across what everyone's got because you guys already own stuff from other companies. And forcing you guys to have to buy a whole new family or system of products, I'm not a big fan of. I don't really like that. Um, so that's why we buy products from a lot of different companies so we can try to keep everything kind of consistent on the same line. Magazines down here for miscellaneous sub guns, Glock, whatever, AK mags, fat AK mags. Um, it's a quad stack, 545. And then over here, I didn't really cover it, but uh, basically the shoot that we're working on right now, sort of the project, is a lot of urban, black, gray uh, sort of kit. So I have a bunch of plate carriers, AC1s and stuff out here, uh, including plate carriers from other companies. This is an old... Uh, Velocity, low vis. These are actually super cool. Not the best plate carrier on the market, but they're just cool for what they are. Low vis, sort of a gray, you wear it under a shirt plate carrier. Uh, I've got two of those because we don't just use our product. Once again, that's not that's not all we do. Um, USW Glock right here. This thing's pretty cool. It's actually one of the cooler uh, chassis out there. So this will actually fit into this little Patagonia bag right there, which is super cool. Pretty much any bag, really. Uh, MP5 satchel, ready rig, standard MP5 right here, fixed stock, Surefire forend. Uh, LMT was actually kind enough to pop this over to us. Um, again, I was like, I want to buy it, and they were like, well, we'll just send it. I was like, oh, well, all right. Um, but I'm, I'm actually, uh, what we're trying to do right now is actually get more rifles from some of the big companies out there, because you guys and other people email us and are like, what do you think about LWRC? What do you think about PWS, LMT? And, um, unless we actually have the guns, our opinions, they don't, in my opinion, hold a lot of weight if we haven't had time on the, the, the company's you know, product and on their guns. Um, so now having an LMT and being able to run around and shoot it, um, I can say like, hey, LMT is great. They do this thing really well. They got this one piece upper receiver that's super cool and rail um, set up. Their bolt carrier groups are awesome. Um, and then whatever else I find. There's a couple things I don't like. Um, I, I don't really like their, uh, their ambi setup. It's not really designed for speed in a bolt lock reload. Um, so right off the bat, I was like, yeah, I'm not a huge fan of that. But um, very cool gun. This is a 12.5, uh, and they also sent the piston stuff for it. So I'll get, I'll get there, but cool gun. I have an MRO on there uh, that we're you know, kind of playing with. Bags, various bags. Josh is over there. Josh, Lowry, he's the armorer. That's me. So he cleans all the guns every day. <laughs> for the most part, yeah, that's a lot yeah. of work. The biggest thing is that this room is, uh, well, it's, it's ever-changing. You know, we're, we have to know where all of this stuff is pretty much at all times. Cause Within any, five seconds. Pretty much, yeah. If it's not much, five seconds, then... <laughs> then I'm in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> well... When I, when I first started, the goal was to have everything organized and put away, and that's, that's not how any of this works, just because we're taking these things to the range two or three times a week, if not multiple times uh, a month. So... You know, it keeps us busy. Uh, it's always a mess in here, but it's always an organized mess. It is. We know where everything is. Again, this is yeah. this is lovely. We know exactly where things are. We, we can we see it. And having room is a big deal. Like having room like this to spread things out and get stuff out, like that's big. However, this is generally how we travel. So this is our bag full of Glocks, M and P's, Glocks, X400, Glock. So we've basically just whatever guns we're using. We just, you know, collect. That's an M&P. That's an M&P. That's a Glock. That's an M&P. And the thing is, and here's what people, here's what they don't, they don't understand. They see all this and they're like, oh, a T-Rex is just like, you're flexing all your stuff. Like, now these are tools, just like if I ran a construction company and I have giant machines for moving dirt and stuff. Like that stuff's really cool. It's also expensive, but those are just tools for the job. These are just tools for the job. We're demonstrating how our holsters work, whether it's a Ragnarok for an X300, um, you know, suppressor holster like this. Um, and rather than show the same pistol over and over and over, we go and we get different configurations. Delta Point Pro Glock 17, Acro Glock 19 Compensator, Glock 19 Stock, Glock 19 RMR, Glock 34 SRO. Like every configuration is a little different. Now they're all kind of the same, but they're also a little different. Glock 17 SRO with XVL2, uh, Surefire's new IR laser. So they're all tools for the job. And frankly, whenever we go to a range day, I don't really care what gun we take. I don't really care if it's got iron sights, if it's got a red dot, if it's got whatever. If I have a job to do, which is film a video on how to shoot a pistol in 10 minutes, 
how to show people how to optimize a plate carrier with a chest rig, how to do a big rifle class. I don't really care which of these guns I come in and grab. I know some of them will be slower than others. Some of them will be a little bit quicker. Some of them may be ergonomically unfortunate, um, but I don't really care, you know, whether I have to take this gun out because I know I'll make it work. What do you use? Weapons wise. Hmm? Weapons. I'm a, I'm a weapons man. Weapons. So what do you favor? Oh, you know, it's a toolbox. I don't care, you put the tools in for the job, that's all. Oh. Uh, there's a lot of other gear in here we probably aren't gonna get to. This is my saw chest rig that I built to hold saw stuff. It can hold like a thousand rounds. Um, there's stuff like all of our different helmets for, oh yeah, we have night vision too, but all of our different helmets, old school, new school, bump helmets, ballistic. Uh, of course, there's night vision. This box under here is actually a box of uh, basically nylon stuff that I'm using often. Um, I just, it goes into here so I kind of know where to find it. And there are other nylon stuff that we're not using as often can go up, you know, up top and stuff. But all of this Ranger Green and sort of, you know, black kit is in here. Um, but we also have night vision, oh, body armor. There's HESCOs. We got all sorts of HESCOs we can use uh, that we can grab. So for night vision, we've got, and again, it kind of goes back to tools for the job. Um, I'm wanting to collect more uh, types of night vision. Uh, we have um, we have access to PVS7s. One of my guys has, has PVS7s. Uh, some of the guys have uh, DTMVGs and like other stuff like that. But it's actually collecting more of the products, individual products. Um, that we can use for content and uh, education. So PVS-14 for, you know, single tube boys. Um, and then of course, I've had 31s now for a while, uh, but we have a couple sets. So if we're doing a shoot with a bunch of guys, you know, I have an extra. And then of course there's, uh, well, these, but, uh, which, you know, I actually, I prefer in some ways to use 31s over the panos, uh, but the panos do come out on occasion. Uh, but again, it's all tools for the job. If we're trying to do uh, stuff on night vision, we gotta wear night vision. If we're doing budget night vision, we'll run 14s. If we're showcasing whatever it happens to be, that's what we're going to use. And so the armory in here is really what allows us to do some of that. Store all of our gear, showcase our gear, teach people about the gear, and just organize the gear. Um, so this is my office, about three days a week, more or less. I come in and work in here for like, usually it's like after five or whatever, I come in here and work for two hours, puttering around, building stuff out, um, which as the responsibilities of the company grows, I wanna try to keep doing this because you have to stay current. You gotta stay current on what new kit's coming out, what new nylon, we're ordering stuff every week. Every week we're on eBay ordering stuff, uh, we're with our distributors ordering stuff, we're getting new products that are coming in just so we can stay current on what's out there. You know, I can't just, you know, just have one helmet and one plate carrier and just be like, these are all I'm gonna use. And in the meantime, new stuff comes out and I'm already behind. Uh, you gotta keep buying stuff, keep testing things. And when you guys have a question on so-and-so's chest rig, so-and-so's plate carrier, so-and-so's optics, so-and-so's new pistol light or whatever, uh, odds are we have it here in our armory. Our guys have played with it. We've taken it to the range. I've taken the customer service guys to the range and we'll actually have some feedback we can give you that has some experience attached to it and that we own it and you're not having to distrust whatever shill is online who's getting paid to advertise that item because we don't get paid to advertise anyone's crap here on YouTube, and we never will, unless we disclose it right at the beginning of the video for very particular reasons, but I'm not interested in doing that. So the stuff in here, we buy or potentially get it for free, uh, like maybe 2%, 1% of the stuff, uh, but otherwise we go out and buy everything so that we can talk about it with zero bias and give you guys uh, the truth behind the item, how good it is, how sucky it is, how lame it is, and that's how we do things here at T-Rex Arms. So, hope that was helpful, just kind of checking out some of the armory. It changes every month, we get new items. Uh, there's, uh, we didn't even go through any of the boxes up there full of nylon, night vision, helmet stuff. That's not actually real explosive, we wouldn't store it in a room like this, um, but yeah. I'm sure at some point we'll do a little update, show you guys some things, and I know you guys are gonna ask, hey, when are you gonna shoot the video with this gun, this gun, this gun, this gun? We're gonna try to do videos on all these different guns in here, whether it's just a short little one take or a longer video, 
It's just a matter of priorities getting through other projects and creating content on our own website and launching cool products. So thanks so much. I'll see you guys around and hope that was fun. So how many guns have you cleaned so in, far? In the four months I've been here? Yeah. Five-ish. How often should you clean guns? Probably significantly less than that. It's a lot of time wasted. I, I would agree with that. We don't we don't clean our guns. They're better uncleaned. Within reason. Add lube on the range and get after it. <laughs>